What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the best new features announced for Unreal Engine 5.6. There's a lot of great improvements coming that will improve the workflows for designers, artists, and programmers. So without further ado, let's jump in. At number 10, we have some awesome updates to MetaHuman incoming. So big push for MetaHuman in this release. One of the biggest things is that MetaHuman will now be coming directly to the Unreal Engine 5 engine. Previously, when building a MetaHuman, you have to use a web-based platform. And the back and forth between the two has honestly been a little bit clunky at times to have to leave the engine to work with an asset that, you know, kind of lives and belongs in the engine. So previously you go to their web interface, you do everything online and you export it and through a Quixel plugin, you're then importing your metahumans, but that process is obviously a little clunky. And so they have you know, put some energy to improve it. And so in this video on the left, you can see that now all of these tools and controls will be coming directly to the Unreal Engine user interface. So big improvement there. Great to see that we don't have to go to many different places to work with assets that really in the end belong in the engine. So great choice there. Up next at number nine is going to be another metahuman improvement along the lines of metahuman. You know, it's a great engine, but as they move to improve the ways in which it can be used as a real character creation toolkit along the lines of things like you know, character creator through Reillusion and the things that, you know, players are really just accustomed to using inside of video games where you can easily control the size, the weight, the build, the hair, you know, scaling characters up and down, kind of like you can see in this video. And it sounds like they're trying to bring better fidelity to the character building system. And alongside that, they've announced this thing called a an outfit asset. Which, which if you've used the MetaHuman Creator, the clothing options are lacking. And so it sounds like they'll be maybe scaling up the capabilities to build clothing, which can also be shared across different MetaHumans and different sizes of MetaHumans. So it'll be great, you know, a pipeline to both create assets for the characters, but also to allow those to scale with different sizes and weights and builds of characters. So great choice there. Up next at number eight is, you guessed it, more MetaHuman tech. Um, and this one is about facial animation. So in previous releases, you know, there's already existing capability for iPhone live link facial capture to MetaHuman. And they're going all out. There's a lot more um, accessibility here because they've announced that also it will work with Android. So they're pushing the technology they're pushing the accessibility, and it sounds like maybe the pipeline is just going to become easier to use. In the past, it has definitely taken, you know, someone who is very skilled with the animation platform, animation blueprints, MetaHuman, you kind of have to know the entire pipeline in super thorough detail. It's not accessible for less experienced users. So getting these tools into the hands of people who want to use it for things like VTubers or cinematic facial animation. You know, there's a lot of different things you can use facial animation for in games and media and movies. So allowing this, um, you know, to be more accessible for both games and virtual production, it's going to be really awesome. Great idea to push this. It's been something that people have wanted really bad. So super excited about this. Um, you know, just a reminder, support the channel. If you like, subscribe, and share, it helps the, uh, support the content that we make. So, you know, consider doing so. And up next we have, at number seven, we have the seamless gameplay transition. So this is something that if you've played games like God of War Ragnarok, or, you know, lots of AAA games do it, lots of games in general do it, where things transition super seamlessly from gameplay combat or gameplay experience right into cinematic. In the camera, for instance, of God of War goes from right over the character's shoulder, you know, directly into a cinematic. And that seamless moment where the camera transitions is can be hard to achieve. There's existing tools within Sequencer that allow you to do it, but they're really expanding it and allowing track-based solutions and more seamless capabilities through Blueprints through Sequencer um, to, you know, just improve this experience and also deal with the weighted priority of different animations as you uh, transition into that sequence. So a lot of great stuff happening here. Getting these tools into the hands of more users is just going to make games better. Up next at number six, we have the rig locomotor. So control rig is an excellent addition to the animator and technical animators pipeline. It has allowed IK and recently with motion matching to just generally improve the quality of game animation. It hasn't really been fully realized. A lot of games haven't 
launched yet with motion matching because it's so new. Um, but with control rig specifically, this has been such an excellent tool for animators and technical animators to, you know, add better IK to their characters during runtime. And it's, you know, IK has obviously been done in many ways in the past. It isn't a brand new thing to allow the feet to snap to hills and, you know, ankles to um, rotate and orient to angled surfaces. But they're really trying to make this robust workflow through control rig. And they've described that this rig locomotor tool is a node or plugin that will allow really to expand IK and just, you know, general body rigs to any number of limbs as it describes. So here, you know, they show this wolf and as it's sort of sidestepping using, you know, uh, directional blend space, you know, over these obstacles and the paws just move really nicely alongside as it follows that target. So excited to see what this means. There's not a whole lot of detail on it yet, but really any improvements and accessibility updates to the control rig to get it into the hands of more users is going to be awesome. Up next at number five, we have the Biome plugin updates for PCG. So if you've used PCG before, super powerful. Again, this is something that almost requires, you know, a really in-depth amount of knowledge on its own. Under the hood, it is a similar visual scripting type, you know, layout to Blueprint. So users of Blueprint can, you know, jump in pretty easily. But this biome plugin basically aims to bridge the gap and allow more people to use it and it uses a data asset based solution where you're creating information about different biomes you know the conditions in which different assets within the procedural content generation asset can exist so trees can exist on hills of this grade and plants can exist on you know ground materials of this texture and so it uses a very intelligent database solution to allow you to create these very you know, awesome procedurally generated forests and, you know, landscape biomes. But this plugin is supposed to just improve that even more. Um, you know, there's obviously a V1. And if you've used PCG, you know, it can be extremely powerful. But, you know, hoping that this allows, you know, maybe more inexperienced users to get into it and bridge the gap for those who have a little bit of a challenge when it comes to the technical aspects of PCG. So awesome update. Super excited for this one. Up next at number four, we have the PSD import capabilities for the UI editor. So if you've ever worked in the Slate editor, it is a good editor, but a lot of times there's challenges working in it. And aspects like the common UI components in you know recent updates for Unreal Engine 5 have definitely added some robust tools and are an improvement from some of the sort of legacy aspects of the UI editor. But, you know, UI artists often mock things up and just work with graphics in software like Adobe Photoshop. So in the past, there's kind of this, um, you know, uh, not super spectacular workflow where if you're working with UI, you have to export all of your assets as PNGs or JPEGs or Targas, whatever file asset, you know, you end up using. And, you know, you basically cut it off from Photoshop, send it out of Photoshop, import it to Unreal. And then if you make edits to that asset, you know, you're, ch you have, you're doing a re-import process. So they're bringing PSD imports in, which are supposed to respect the layering system of PSDs and allow you to work with and animate those layers. And so that in itself is just really cool. You know, there's a lot of unanswered questions about, you know, how this is actually gonna work, but it sounds like basically they'll allow you, if you have a Photoshop file with 10 layers of a UI, then you can import all of those with one PSD and animate all of the layers within that independently. So that's just really cool. The UI section of Unreal is one that's due for a little bit of love. So super excited to see that here with this update. Up next, number three is the Chaos Cloth solution. And so, you know, Chaos Destruction is what most people are familiar with, you know, blowing things up, you know, turning solid objects into many pieces of destructive geometry. And this, you know, was one of the bigger updates in the beginning of Unreal Engine 5 that people were super excited with. So cloth is one thing that, you know, has been in Unreal Engine and there's cloth editing tools already, but this chaos cloth solution is supposed to hopefully add a lot of control and basically bridge the gap where right now a lot of people do these clothing simulations and things like Marvelous Designer, or they cache things into you know, these texture cache geometry, you know, surface animations for, for cloth. Or, you know, there's there's cloth, cloth physics already and, you know, cloth can be rigged, cloth can be 
animated with you know certain properties and be told what is a physics cloth within Unreal. It's not that it doesn't exist. They're giving a little oomph to that pipeline and adding a more robust chaos cloth solution, which I think a lot of people will be super excited for. At number two, we have the world bookmark system. So this might sound, you know, sort of silly. Bookmarks, are they really that exciting? In this situation, what they're doing is, you know, when you're working with a project on a project with a lot of people and you work in a game that's an open world, or even if it's just you as a solo developer, having key places in the world to navigate to, you know, you work with certain environments, you work in certain levels where, you know, where things are placed in the world. And what this solution is going to allow people to do is set specifications around world bookmarks. So let's say, you know, here they keep hopping to, um, you know, an island environment or a boat environment. You would be able to set the location of that environment and also specify the data layers and, you know, like world uh, landscape tiles associated with it that you want to be loaded and conditions you want to be loaded into the editor when you go to that location. So it'll make it easier to basically hop around the world and have things be the way they need to be um, for both you and your team. So super useful. This one's going to be awesome. If you've ever worked at a big studio, you know that this is like an awesome thing that everyone has a proprietary solution for jumping around the world. So um, this is awesome. Super excited for this one. And finally, this is going to be one of the biggest technical updates that is still sort of a work in progress, but the Iris networking system. So if you've ever worked in multiplayer in Unreal Engine, there's obviously a pretty robust solution to how to do multiplayer gameplay. Um, you know, there's existing solutions that have like, you know, similar system through Unreal Engine 4. And they're really trying to take a new approach to how to accommodate information transfer over very large servers. So if you've ever played Fortnite, 100 players. The ability to quickly replicate information across 100 players and do it in a lightweight and performant format is something that they're currently experimenting with in UEFN, in Fortnite, and they're really battle testing a lot of these solutions. So this one really isn't quite perfect yet. And a lot of these things are sort of under wraps and haven't been, you know, super battle tested by other studios. And I'm super excited to see how this works out as someone who works in multiplayer gaming. It's awesome to see that they're taking a fresh approach to this and improving some of the ways which things are done currently. There's, you know, many different ways to structure your client server architecture and it sounds like they're just improving this and you know working to improve the existing uh, structure so super excited about this excited to see what this means and that is all for today so i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this please consider liking subscribing and sharing this video helps the channel and helps us bring more content about unreal engine 5 to you so thank you and have a great day